Good morning, folks. Welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to be on organization. Now, when I talk about organization today, I'm talking about organization of your life. This is time management. This is creating a schedule. This is creating balance in your life, which is something that I think we all strive for, but getting it done, getting it done, implementing a system that's going to work for you, for your family, so that you can function and thrive every single day and you can learn to be proactive instead of reactive. And we will talk a little bit more about being proactive and reactive with our day-to-day -day tasks and things that need to be done. For those of you that follow me, you all know that I have a calendar. You're always seeing me put it out there on Snapchat and social media. You also know that I have a daily to-do list and so does everybody in my family as well. We have done this system for many years. Ever since our children were very small, I have implemented this system and it's worked wonders. And I believe that what it does is it creates a very functioning environment. We are all in sync with one another. We are always in communication with each other. And I wanna share some of those tips with you today. I'm going to do some follow up videos and go more in depth on the tips and the things that I'm talking about with you today. We're just gonna cover the basics, but I think these are gonna be useful tools that can help you create a system in your home that is gonna work where everybody is working together as a team and you're much more effective. I firmly believe that if you want to have structure and balance in your life, you have to have some set rules for yourself and for your own life. And to me, that is having a plan. You have to have a plan and you have to plan ahead. If you are waking up in the morning and thinking about what you have to do that day, you're probably gonna be pretty reactive. But if you are planning ahead of time, let's say at least one day ahead of time, if not earlier, then you're gonna be much more proactive and efficient with your time. So let's dive into some of the tips and some of the things that I think that you are going to need to have in order to create this balance in your life and feel like you are actually getting somewhere instead of being a hamster spinning in a wheel. I think that there are so many people walking around dazed and confused and frazzled because they don't know what's coming, they don't know what's going, there is no system whatsoever. I really believe that the one and most important thing you can learn to do is write everything down. I don't care what your method is, it can be on your smart devices, it can be on your laptop, whatever you use, you want to get it written down. That is really the number one thing. And I think it all starts with having a calendar. I have a calendar here and I have a calendar here. Let me explain these calendars. Let's start with this one first. This is the Family Command Center, and I think every family needs to have one of these. This is where all the communication takes place, and that gets fed back to you, and that is how you learn to plan your day. So it all starts right here. Every family needs one. Find a central location to put your command center calendar. We keep ours in the kitchen on the fridge. You want it to be where everybody can see it. And then you have to get everybody to plug in and use it. Be very strict at first if this is something that's going to be new in your home, but it is very important. So what you do is every single person in the family writes what is going on. This is going to be your appointments. This is going to be any um, practices that the kids have. This is gonna be games. This is gonna be church events. It's going to be every single thing. If your husband has to golf and he knows it ahead of time, it goes on the calendar. You got a hair appointment, it goes on the calendar. Kids have practices, everything gets, gets on the calendar. And make it each family member's responsibility that they put it on the calendar. They shouldn't be telling you and then you put it on the calendar. You have to phase yourself out of a job with parenting. And how you do that is by giving these responsibilities to your kids. So your kids have to put everything on the calendar and if they're not doing it, then that's where you have to step in and have consequences. Because once there's consequences in place, you're gonna get family members to plug in and do it. Everybody puts their information on the calendar. What we do in our home, as everybody has a highlight color. So we are all color coded. Everybody puts their stuff on the calendar and then they end up highlighting it afterwards. This is the communication to me of how I am going to run my schedule. So calendar is number one. I think everyone needs one. 
And I'm gonna tell you, I prefer doing a paper calendar like this and doing the month at a glance because I think this helps with pacing. When you can see your whole entire month, you, you, it gives you a sense of structure of what's happening and it helps you to pace yourself, which now is going to create balance in your life. The other calendar that I highly recommend, but maybe not everybody is going to need this. I work from home and I, most of the time, and I have a lot on my plate because I do blogging, I do YouTube, I do health coaching, I do all sorts of different things. So I could be all over the place. So it has really helped me to have a personal calendar. This is a little bit different than the family calendar because this is Tracy's calendar. This is everything to do with me. What goes on here is everything that I need to get done for blogging, everything for YouTube, any of my appointments are on here. If I have a vacation day, it is on here. This communicates to me. But first, before this, comes this. So once I know what everybody is doing, then I can make this. And you wanna be making your calendars out way ahead of time. As far out as you can, you wanna do your whole month. I like to already have the next month almost all written in. So when I flip this over, I already know what's going on. So doing your month at a glance, doing your calendar, and doing a color coding system will really help you gauge what is going on and it gives you feedback for what you're going to do on the daily. This is going to be your communication for moving on to your daily stuff. The next thing that you wanna do, and you are gonna find out that everything that I talk about all ends up being very connected, is you wanna eliminate the paper trail. And this is especially important if you have children. They're coming home with papers all the time. You've got stuff everywhere. You can't keep track of anything, and it just, it becomes utter chaos. Well, that's not balance and structure, and that's gonna make you very reactive, which is what we are trying to prevent. We wanna to continue to be proactive. So you have to eliminate the paper trail. Child comes home with some, some information from school. What do you do? You immediately put it on the family calendar and get rid of this. The other important thing to remember is we all have our smart devices. We all have our phones on us at all times. Use your notes app and your reminders app on your phone if there's something that needs to go in there and have it go off, maybe two days ahead of time. Maybe have it go off again one day ahead of time. But you wanna eliminate the paper trail. Dentist appointments, they scheduled, we went to the dentist, they scheduled the next point appointments for in six months. What do I do? I go all the way to August, I write the information in. If you wanna keep these, what I like to do is I put things on the back of my calendar. You could put those on the back of your calendar. Whatever you need to do, you need to eliminate the paper trail because what that is doing is it is keeping you frazzled and it's keeping you from being productive. So get it on the calendar, pitch it, throw it in the garbage, get it out of sight, get it out of mind. Everything should already be on the command center. Friday folders come home from school, pull the paperwork out, Take the information you need to write on the calendar, write it on there, pitch the papers. Go through their schoolwork. If there's anything that they need to work on, set that to the side, throw everything else away, then sit your child down and go over whatever they need to work on that they, they didn't do well on in school that week. Another tip that I have is split up the household responsibilities. Mom shouldn't be doing it all and dad shouldn't be doing it all. There is no reason why your kids cannot help with the household responsibilities. I get it, they're busy. They have practices, they have lessons, they have games, they have this, they have that. Well, so do you. So if everybody is splitting it up, it all will get done and nobody is stressed because it's all falling on their shoulders. This is good teaching skills for your kids. Again, you're phasing yourself out of a job you are ultimately creating adults. So look at it that way. I'm phasing myself out of a job and in the end, they have to be functioning adults. You are not doing your children any favor by doing everything for them and not teaching them how to take care of household responsibilities. It's everybody's responsibility. And how you know who is available to do what is because everybody is putting their information on the command center. So if you look at it and you're like, okay, 
Somebody needs to take the garbage out and somebody needs to unload the dishwasher. Hmm, well let's see who is available to do that. And that's how you decide is by the communication that comes from here. All right, so we have our calendars done. We have the paper trail all eliminated. Now what happens? Well, I'm gonna explain with you what comes next. I generally start right here. I start with the family calendar because this is gonna to communicate to me what is going on with everybody else. And since I create my own schedule, I first take the information from the command center, then I move it on to my work and my personal calendar. So I can see from looking at what the family members have going on, what my availability is. What days am I going to work from home? What days am I gonna be on the road? What days do I have appointments on that I have to work around? How much time do I have to work on blogging? How much time do I have to work on YouTube? And that all comes from that command center. So now I have my whole week mapped out. From there, I move on to my own personal to-do or task list. And what I like to do, and I strongly recommend it, is I like to do block scheduling. So what I like to do is divide my day up with everything that I need to get done and I break it down into different time frames throughout the day. Now again, you gotta figure out what method works for you. There's a lot of online apps. There's just, you can do a journal, you can do a notepad. It's whatever works for you, but you wanna map out your day. And if there is one thing that I can say is, I believe that we are the most alert and functioning in the morning. So in my mind, what I wanna do is I wanna get my best content done early in the day because as the day progresses, we get a little bit more tired, we get a little bit more mentally drained, we're putting out fires and it is a lot harder. So you wanna get your really creative work or the really important things done early in the day. And you wanna prevent yourself from being distracted. I think the biggest thing is that we're finding ourselves distracted all the time. Social media is a big thing that pulls us away. If you work in the office and you have two computer screens and you have Facebook up on one screen, but you're working on a project on the other and looking over, I think they say the average person, it takes them 23 minutes to refocus back to what they were working on if they get distracted. So when I am generating my to-do list for each and every day, I try to tackle those things I'm going to be the sharpest for early in the day. So let's take an example. Here is today's to-do list. Pretty much all crossed off, so you're not gonna be able to see everything, but my day started at 4 a.m. So really right here I had from 4 to 5.30 what is gonna happen. So I have an hour and a half I have what vitamins I'm gonna take upon awakening. Then I have workout and I actually say what I'm gonna do. I'm doing the treadmill. I'm doing a five minute arm workout, which is a video. And then I'm doing abs. This is gonna take from four to 5.30. Once I accomplish those, I cross them off. That is pretty much how I operate every single day. I get up between four and five and I generally do my workout first thing because again, this goes back to later on in the day, I'm not gonna have the energy and I'm gonna be busy and things are gonna come up and it's probably not gonna take place if I don't get it done at that time. Then we move on from 5.30 to six. I have some more vitamins that I took post-workout. Then I do my devotions, my meditations, and I make my bed. From there, from six to 7.30, we're jumping in the shower, we're getting on with our day. Then it continues to go on. I have a time right here for one hour where I check my social media, I check my emails, I do the family task list for that day, which again, it all comes from the communication center. And then it breaks down throughout the rest of the day and I actually even put on here when I'm going to go to bed. And I try to stick to this. And what it does is it creates structure and it creates balance in my life. If I weren't doing this, I'd be all over the place. There's a lot of different systems to doing this. You know, here's an example of one that I've done before where it's a different, it's a, it's, this one was done on the computer. I have different things on here. It's all color coded for me to see, but I think it is important that every single person creates some type of to-do list in, and you have to do those, those biggies in the morning. Whether you work in the office or work from home, you're always gonna have responsibilities. 
Some things are gonna be non-negotiables and those are generally the first things that you're gonna put on your day-to-day -day list. What has to be done? Then you get down to the very end and you'll have your negotiables. So if you don't get to those, you move them to the next day. So let's, let's recap just because it can be confusing. So on your day-to-day, -day, which you are starting from the family cal calendar, communicating to you what your day is going to look like. Then you take a look at the things that are the non-negotiables. So if you know you're gonna work out every day, that's a non-negotiable. That is gonna happen whether you want it to or not. You take your non-negotiables, you plug them in where they are going to work best in your little time slots. And we're gonna get into all of this in more detail in individual videos because this is a lot to go over. Put the non-negotiables in, then you put in the things that would be a negotiable, meaning if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. It can always be moved. And then you stick to this. You stick to this like glue. That is the key and that is the hardest thing. You don't get distracted. Meaning if you have from 7.30 a.m. to 9.30 a.m., you are doing a task, you don't stop and look at Facebook. You don't stop and pull up Instagram. You don't do anything else. You stick with what exactly what you're supposed to be doing during that time block. I think time blocking is so effective and it keeps us on track and it keeps us very proactive. Once we start taking breaks and we're over here and we're checking this, we become very reactive because we become very frazzled and we're always trying to backpedal. Keep to a system, keep to a plan, stick to it like glue. Of course there is gonna be obstacles that are gonna come up. The school calls and you have a sick child. That's gonna happen, but that's not happening very often. So that generally is just going to be an excuse. Continue to stick to your plan and don't let anything derail you from it. Don't get distracted. Complete the tasks before moving on to the other task. When you implement a system like this of time blocking, what you're learning to do is make appointments with yourself to do your most important work and be way more intentional with your time. Studies have shown that people that live by this method and they make appointments with themselves and they learn to say no to things that aren't going to bring out the best in them or bring them closer to their goals, they're the ones that are more successful. They're the ones that are your entrepreneurs. They have a schedule, they have a system. They get up early and they get the job done. It's not that hard, it really isn't. For those of you that have followed me for a while, you know that I love Dave Ramsey and I love and live by one of his quotes. One of the quotes that he says is, you have to tell your money how it is going to be spent. Well, what I have done is I have turned that around to time. You have to tell your time how it's going to be spent because if you don't do that, somebody else is going to take that time away from you. Again, I have mentioned that you have to find what works for you. Don't hesitate to do this all on a computer. But the thing that I like about seeing everything in front of you is you can't minimize it. You can't close it out. So even if you're working and you're on your computer and you have your calendar sitting out beside you and your task list for the day, they're always there. You can't close them out. You can't minimize them. You can be working away and you can always look over. So they're always there. That is why I like that method. But you do have to find what works for you. We do use an app called Cozy. You can look that up in your phone and you can get it. I think it's free. I don't think we pay anything. But go to your app store. That has been really great. That is where we print our task lists from. We also have all of our shopping lists on there. I have a Walmart list. I have an Aldi list. I have a Kroger list. I have a Target list. All of our lists are on there. It gives you two options, a to-do, and it gives you a shopping. You know, it's, it's a lot of work at first to set these up and get everybody on there, but once you do, everything runs smoothly. You have every family member get the app. You can print these things out if you like the paper. For my kids, I like to set their task list out because then I can look and see what's getting done. Again, it's always there for me to see instead of me constantly having to pull up the app on my phone and see who checked things off. It's beautiful. You check things off as you do them. They also have a calendar on there if you want to use that. And you can also color code. So you can take every family member on there and you can color code them. The key here, guys, is you just got to find what method works for you. But I really believe that it is all about having a plan. And then you really have to learn to stick to that plan and blocking out the day. A lot of people can't get their workouts in. 
I can always find a place where you can squeeze a workout in. You have to ask yourself, what's the most important thing? You know, ask yourself right now, what is the most important thing? Is it losing weight? Well, what are you gonna do daily to make that happen? If you don't, if you don't get it on the list, it's not gonna happen. Put it in a time block. What, what time block of the day am I gonna be able to fit that in? I wanna say you're gonna to wanna to do it first thing in the morning if, you, if at all possible. Because again, we're more energized, we're more sharp, we're more alert. As the day gets going, you're putting out those fires, the kids are calling this, that, this, that. Hard to get it done. So you gotta look at what is the most important thing. You wanna get out of debt? What are you doing daily and putting on your list to get there? You wanna improve your marriage? Well, what are you doing on the daily? The thing is, is you've gotta look, you've gotta look at a big picture but you gotta focus on the small things. You know, it's, it's a big picture to say, I'm gonna lose 30 pounds. But, what, but the, the focus down here, which isn't the big picture, is what you're doing daily, and that's what needs to go on here. So I hope this was helpful, guys. I get so many questions to do this, and like I said, I am gonna break it down. We are going to just tackle the calendar one day, and I'm gonna give tips on that. We're just gonna tackle the to-do list. We're gonna tackle shopping lists all those nitty gritties, you let me know what you wanna hear. I can't wait to get them out because I do think that this is really how we create good structure and balance in our life and we become very proactive and not reactive. You know, failing to plan is planning to fail. You know that's my, um, that's my motto. So um, stick with it, get it done. I'm glad you were here with me today. I hope you found something to help you, some useful tools. Can't wait to get the next video out. Have a great weekend. Don't forget, subscribe, give it a like, and um, I'll see you in the next video. <laughs>